hello everyone welcome to my channel this is Akash here and in this video I am going to talk about how you can deploy a sample hello world application using Cloud Foundry so let's go to the agenda so the first thing is Cloud Foundry application lifecycle and then how you can create a Cloud Foundry manifest.yaml and what is the use of manifest.yaml to create your application and the third thing is creating a SAP cloud platform account so if you remember in my previous video, I have created a Pivotal Cloud Foundry account. So in this video, I'm going to create a SAP Cloud Platform account. This is just to give you a flavor of how all the Cloud Foundry distribution works. And finally, we'll be having a demo on deploying a Hello World application using SAP Cloud Platform. So let's look into the application lifecycle of Cloud Foundry. In this example, a developer is trying to run a command CF push, which is being used to create an application in Cloud Foundry. So then the CFCLI sends that command to the cloud controller and tells to the cloud controller, please create an app for me. Okay. So now what is cloud controller? Cloud controller is an application runtime, which is responsible for calling REST APIs of all the components, which you need to deploy your code into the cloud foundry. So now what is the next thing which cloud controller will do? So cloud controller will store that application, which you have provided at the time of running the command that is CF push, it, it will store all the application libraries of that code using the build packs. So build pack plays a major role here in the Cloud Foundry. So what is the use of build packs? Build packs provide framework and all the runtime support for your application. So whenever you try to push an application in the Cloud Foundry, Cloud Foundry automatically detects an appropriate build pack for you. Okay, for example, if you are running a Java application, it will detect a Java runtime build pack for you and using this you'll be able to package your application with the application runtime and all the required dependency so this is a similar job what docker image does for you so but this is not a docker image this is the cloud foundry build pack concept once all the application is being packaged together cloud controller will store that package into the blob store so what is blob store blob store is again a repository for the large binary files so you must be having a question that why can't we use github so just to make you understand that github cannot easily maintain a large piece of binary files because github is designed only to store the codes so once everything is stored in the cloud controller blob store cloud controller will send a request to the auctioner to stage that application so next thing is that auctioner will send a request to the executor to schedule and create an auction so now the executor will create a garden container inside the diago cell so try to see the concept over here just for instance you can understand that diago cell is a set of vm or you can say that it's a vm okay and inside that vm there are several containers which are running that is nothing but your garden container just to take you to the concept of docker in docker we have a vm and inside that vm we have multiple docker containers so this works with a similar fashion of how docker works but there the technology is docker container and here in the case of cloud foundry we are using garden container so once the container is created that is garden container is created garden will download the droplets from the blob store that droplet is nothing but the application which was stored via the cloud controller so that will get downloaded in the created container once it is downloaded the application will start running in the garden container so once this task is done the diago will send a report of the running application to the cloud controller and then cloud controller will send that request back to the cli that app has been created and user will be able to see that thing yeah so this is all about the cloud foundry application lifecycle next is how we can create a manifest file for your application so first of all what is the use of manifest file if today we have to run an application in cloud foundry i have to give a command called cf push and all the environments which cf push require for example what is the app name what is the memory you want to limit Okay. Do you have any service bindings? Do you want to create any route? So all these things, all those things you have to write in a single command, which is sometimes a tedious task because you can't give so many environment in a single line. For those kind of scenarios, we can use manifest file where we can define the entire environments for an application. For example, if you can see over here, we have a sample manifest YAML. So the name of the application is a sample.net core hello world program okay and then i'm going to create a random route i'm not defining any static route for now i'll show you that how we can create static route as well 
and then uh, I'm giving an environment that is cache NuGet packages equal to false. Okay, so what is the use of uh, NuGet? As you know that NuGet is used, NuGet is again a dependency manager for the .NET applications, similar to what Maven does for you. It is also it also acts as a dependency manager and it downloads all the dependencies which you have defined in the NuGet file. So I am giving it as false because I don't want any conflict to happen from the NuGet feed and the local NuGet cache. So once once your manifest is created, the only thing which you have to do is you have to write CF push and CF push will deploy your application using this manifest file to the Cloud Foundry. So this is the use of manifest file. So now we'll be having a demo on deploying a sample .NET Hello World application in SAP Cloud Platform. Okay, how we can create a SAP Cloud Platform account? This is the link for that. So over here you have to provide the username and password which you have created while creating the SAP.com account. To create a SAP Cloud Platform trial account, just go to SAP cloud platform register just click on this link that is developer.sap.com so the first thing is that you have to log into the sap website that is nothing but this one and then you have to click on this one okay and you have to provide these details so after that uh, you will get a link in your email id just follow that link you will get your user credentials once you get that user credentials you have to go to this page uh, you have to log in to log in with that username and password once you are successfully authenticated you'll get a page something like this so there are two things you have to enter into your trial account okay so once you get this page you have to click on this one that is trial and over here you will be given an api endpoint you will be given an org and then you will be given a space which will be created by default okay so now i'll be using this org and space and the API endpoint to log in into the CFCLI. So let's log into the Cloud Foundry account. So first I'll target the API. So this is the API endpoint which you will be given after creating your SAP Cloud Foundry account. Once the API is set, you can just do CF login with your username. So my username is this one. I have been successfully authenticated to the Cloud Foundry account. Just to CF target. So this will show you all the details about your user. So the username, the org which I belong to. So this is my this is my username. This is my org. This is the space which has been created. And this is the API endpoint. And what is the Cloud Foundry version I am using? So for this scenario. I'm going to take my sample application which is available in my GitHub account. You guys just have to go here. If you're a developer, you might be interested into the details of the code. I might not be interested because I'm a DevOps engineer. My responsibility as a DevOps engineer is just to make the developer push their code into the Cloud Foundry. Okay. So this is this is a normal csproj file where all the uh, reference files has been given then we have a startup.cs file where i am returning a response that is hello world okay so for this one i have created a manifest.yaml where i have given the application name and then i am providing a random route because every time an application gets created it will be created with a host name which will be merged along with your domain name so for example, if you just go here in your in your CLI, you just have to run CF domains and it will show you that what all domains you have. So for your application, you can use any of these domains. 
so whenever you provide a static route here that static route will be added with this domain and and th that particular name will be the host name of your application let's go and try to deploy this git clone so this git clone will actually download my code from the github to my local system okay so if i'll just go here if i'll just do ls you can see that a, a file has been downloaded that is dotnet core hello world application okay so i'll just go here so i'll just go to the manifest file or i'll not do anything as i told in my previous slide that uh, once you once you put all the details in the manifest you just have to run command cf push okay so this will take care of so it just you just have to wait for some time it will push application into the cloud foundry so the app is now created so if you can cf apps is the command or CFA is the command to see what all the apps running inside your Cloud Foundry space. So if you can see that we have an application and with the name of the application is .NET Core Hello World which has been deployed successfully in the Cloud Foundry and uh, it is using one of the instance. So by default it will take one instance. If you want to, if you want more than one instance you have to define that in the manifest.yaml and then memory it is using by default 1G that is 1 gigabyte so my my application is very small i might not require 1 gb so it has dedicated 1 gb to this uh, particular application so this also can be minimized to 250 mb or something like that and then this is the url to access your application so let's go and see your application whether it is running perfectly or not it is successfully deployed and you are getting this hello world response from your application yep so your application is successfully deployed now i just want to show you that uh, if you can see here the route the random route has created a route name that is smart ostrich okay i might not like because uh, mm, i wanted to give some some standard name in my host names okay so if you can see that the first section is your application name and the last section is your domain the top level the top level domain and the parent level domains and then in between it has created a route that is smart switch how you can see that what all the routes has been created this route cf routes command so if you can see yeah there is a route which has been created dot net hello world smart ostrich so how to give a static route so to give a static route you have to create a route first command for creating a route is cf create route and then you have to provide the space name in our case it is dev so i'll just see that what is this space name so cfs s or cf spaces will tell you that what space you are into or if you are just target cf target it will show you presently what all the org and space you have targeted so in in my case it is the org is this one and the space is dev so the command is cf create route and then dev is the space name and then you have to provide the domain so i'll just copy the domain again I'll just copy one of the domains see if create a route then space name and then the route and then hyphen hyphen host hyphen hyphen host name my first app okay 
so this space is already present in some other space so I'll just create my first app one two three yep so this route has been created so I'll just go and check my route so now I just have to provide this thing in the manifest.yaml I know it's a quite a tedious task that's the reason many people use random route but that's not a good practice because many companies doesn't want any random host name to be generated so I have just provided the route which I have created just now now if you do CF push your app has been pushed again with the new route so the app has been started again so if you just do CF apps you will get two routes because uh, I haven't deleted the previous route from this application so how to do that CF unmap route the application name the domain and the host name and the host name that is hyphen hyphen So if you see the app again, so the previous route has been now deleted. So this is a real time scenario where many of the applications are getting access by different different URLs. So you just have to create route and you have to attach that particular route to that application. So that's all about a demo for this video. So after doing all this, you have to clear everything. So what are the things we have created? We have created the app. So how to delete an app? You just have to write a command cf delete. Just do cf delete and the app name. And that's how you can delete your app. And to delete the routes, first see what all the routes you have. And then do cf delete route domain name. And then the host name. Yes. And then the second route as well. So thanks a lot guys for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.